This video is an introduction to hypothesis testing and in statistics we're going to be using the idea of hypothesis testing throughout the rest of the semester. Um, so basically here we are setting up a set of hypotheses um, to try and test some idea. And so the hypotheses are going to be a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So we're going to start by looking at the form of the null hypothesis. So our definition here is that this is a hypothesis to be tested. We're usually testing in the null hypothesis that there is no change or no difference from what we expect. And so the null hypothesis is gonna take the form H sub zero, is that mu, mu being the population mean, so sometimes this parameter is gonna vary, but we're looking at hypothesis tests for a population mean to start with. And we're testing that that mean is equal to some value, which we're gonna call mu sub zero, but when we do an actual hypothesis test, that gets filled in with a numeric value. So um, an example might be that we want to test the claim that the average amount of um, soda in a can is 12 fluid ounces, okay? So maybe we are the soda company and we wanna make sure that we're not overfilling our cans, which would be um, an expense to us, waste of money. And we might want to make sure that we're not underfilling our cans, which would be um, violating what we're stating we're, we're selling our customers. So in that particular case, we might take a sample of cans of soda, measure the fluid ounces of soda in each can. And what we're testing in general is that the population mean, so the mean of all cans of soda, is equal to, well, if there's no change or no difference from what's expected, we would expect that population mean to be right at 12 fluid ounces. Okay, so there's an example of our null hypothesis. Um, if we continue on and look at the alternative, um, whenever we create a null, we have to also have an alternative, which is, well, what else might occur? And so the formal definition is that this is a hypothesis to be considered as an alternative to the null. And it's gonna test for a change or a difference from what we expected under that null hypothesis. And so there are three different types of alternative hypotheses. You'll see on the, on the paper here, there's what's called a two-tailed test, a left-tailed test, and then a right-tailed test. Um, anytime you're doing a hypothesis test, you are going to choose one of those three alternatives, whichever one is appropriate for your test. So if we stick to the soda can example, um, we could test this as a two-tailed test, which would mean our alternative is just that the mean is not equal to whatever value we tested in the null. So you'll notice that mu sub zero here is in the null, that same exact value, mu sub zero, is in the alternative. So we're not changing numerical values. What we're changing is what we think um, the relationship between mu and that same value is equal to. And so what you'll notice here in a two-tailed test is we're just testing that there is some difference from 12 fluid ounces, okay? So again, that doesn't mean we're looking for a mean that is greater than or less than 12 specifically, just that there's any difference that we detect from 12. Okay, so we might use that alternative if we were interested in both overfilling of cans and underfilling of cans. So another option is what we call a left-tailed test. And in a left-tailed test, we're gonna test to see if the population mean is less than whatever that specified value mu sub zero is. So if we chose to do a left-tailed test for this example, we would write that the mean is less than 12 fluid ounces. And this would be specifically if we were concerned with underfilling our cans. So um, maybe we're a consumer protection agency and we wanna make sure that um, the consumers are getting what they're uh, paying for then we wouldn't care if the cans were overfilled, but we would care if they were underfilled on average. Okay, and then the last option is what we call a right-tailed test. And in a right-tailed test, we're gonna test to see if the population mean is greater than our specified value, mu sub zero. So back to our soda can example, this would be HA 
is that the mean is greater than 12 fluid ounces. And we would use that alternative if we were concerned with the population mean being greater than 12. So maybe this time we're the soda can company and we wanna make sure that our machines are set correctly and they are actually filling those um, to 12 fluid ounces, not more than 12, because um, we would be losing money. And so maybe that would be the alternative we would wanna test. So again, in general, we are picking a null and then we are choosing one of the three alternatives, whichever one is appropriate for the question that we're interested in, and testing from there. Okay, last thing on this page is the basic logic of hypothesis testing, and that tells us that we're gonna take a random sample of size N from our population. So again, we're back to our soda cans, and we're not gonna look at every single can of soda that this company produces, but we'll take a sample of size N. And if that sample data is consistent with the null hypothesis, then we're not going to reject the null. So in other words, if it looks like on average, our sample mean is close to 12 fluid ounces, then we would decide that that was consistent with the null and we would not reject it. Okay. If on the other hand, if the sample data is inconsistent with the null hypothesis, um, specifically in the direction of the alternative, if you've chosen one of the two directional alternatives, um, then you would reject the null. And so, for example, if we ended up taking a sample of cans of soda and found that the sample mean was, um, in this case, for example, if it was a left tail test and we found that the sample mean was a little bit below 12, then that might tend to support this alternative. Okay, And so that's the basic logic of hypothesis testing. Um, to finish up this video, we're just going to run through a few examples of setting up some hypotheses to get comfortable. Um, so it says for each of the following practice problems, we're gonna state the appropriate null and alternative hypotheses, and then determine whether it's left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. So in the first example, it says the Greasy Spoon restaurant has an automatic hamburger patty machine, a new addition to their kitchen to save time and effort. The manufacturer had designed the machine so each patty weighs four ounces, and the restaurant claims that the machine dispenses more than four ounces, so they're concerned that they're going through their supply of hamburger faster than they should be. Um, in that case, remember our null hypothesis is always testing that that population mean has no change or no difference from what's expected, and we would expect if the machine is working properly that those patties are going to be on average four ounces. The alternative in this case, we have to decide now between left-tailed, right-tailed, and two-tailed. Um, our concern is that the machine is dispensing more than four ounces, and so what we would choose is that the al um, alternative is that the mean is greater than four ounces. And if you remember, this is what we called a right-tailed test. Okay, moving on to example number two says an automobile manufacturer recommends that any purchaser of one of its new cars bring it into a dealer for a 3,000 mile checkup. The company wishes to know whether the true average mileage at this initial service differs from 3,000. So again, what we are testing in the null is that there's no change or no difference from what's expected. And what we're expecting is that there's um, 3,000 as the average mileage when people bring their vehicles in. Okay, and the company is trying to decide if that actually differs from 3,000. So they're not looking at whether it's above or below, just different. And so that would be the alternative that mu is not equal to 3,000. And this would be an example of a two-tailed, running out of marker here, a two-tailed test. And then our last example for this video says so electronic chips used in a high-powered microcomputer have been claimed by the manufacturer to last at least 630 hours. A production manager wants to determine if the manufacturer is wrong. So our claim is that they're lasting at least 630 hours. Um, if the manufacturer is wrong, um, that would mean that they are actually lasting less than 630 hours. So our null here is going to be that the mean is 630 hours, just like claimed by the manufacturer. And what we are concerned with is that 
the manufacturer is wrong, meaning they do not last 630 or more, they last less than 630. And so that would be an example because of the less than sign, that's an example of what we call a left-tailed test.